Welcome to Daily Scripture and Meditation with Shirley Celis Jackson. We begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tuesday, the 19th of September, 2023, of the 24th week in Ordinary Time, is the optional memorial of St. Janarius, Bishop and Martyr. Aim at this, pray for this, desire this, that you may be divested of all self-seeking, and thus naked, follow Jesus naked, that you may die to yourself and eternally live to me. Daily Prayer Lord Jesus, your healing presence brings life and restores us to wholeness of mind, body, and spirit. Speak your words to me and give me renewed hope, strength, and courage to follow you in the midst of life's sorrows and joys. Amen. Introduction to the Liturgy of the Word St. Janarius According to tradition, in the year 305, Janarius, the bishop of Benevento in Italy, received word that two deacons and two laymen were imprisoned under the brutal emperor Diocletian. Janarius was preparing to visit the men in prison when the Romans arrested him and his companions on their way to perform this work of mercy. The imprisoned men, including Janarius and his companions, were all sentenced to death and exposed to wild beasts. When the beast refused to attack them, the men were beheaded Janarius is the patron saint of Naples, Italy. He is remembered in New York City at the yearly festival of San Hinaro. The Epistle The bishop must be irreproachable. Similarly, deacons must hold fast to the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1. Beloved, this saying is trustworthy. Whoever aspires to the office of bishop desires a noble task. Therefore, a bishop must be irreproachable, married only once, temperate, self-controlled, decent, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not aggressive, but gentle, not contentious, not a lover of money. He must manage his own household well, keeping his children under control with perfect dignity. For if a man does not know how to manage his own household, how can he take care of the church of God? He should not be a recent convert, so that he may not become conceited and thus incur the devil's punishment. He must also have a good reputation among outsiders, so that he may not fall into disgrace, the devil's trap. Similarly, deacons must be dignified, not deceitful, not greedy for sordid gain, holding fast to the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. Moreover, they should be tested first. Then, if there is nothing against them, let them serve as deacons. Women similarly should be dignified, not slanderers, but temperate and faithful in everything. Deacons may be married once and must manage their children and their households well. Thus those who serve well as deacons gain good standing 
and much confidence in their faith in Christ Jesus. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 101 Responsorial Verse I Will Walk With Blameless Heart Of mercy and judgment I will sing to you, O Lord. I will sing praise. I will persevere in the way of integrity. When will you come to me? I will walk with blameless heart within my house. I will not set before my eyes any base thing. I will walk with blameless heart. Whoever slanders his neighbor in secret, him I will destroy. The man of haughty eyes and puffed up heart I will not endure. I will walk with blameless heart. My eyes are upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He who walks in the way of integrity shall be in my service. I will walk with blameless heart. Gospel Acclamation Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. A great prophet has arisen in our midst, and God has visited his people. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Gospel Young man, I tell you, arise. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 7 verse 11. Jesus journeyed to a city called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd accompanied him. As he drew near to the gate of the city, a man who had died was carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. A large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he was moved with pity for her and said to her, Do not weep. He stepped forward and touched the coffin. At this, the bearers halted, and he said, Young man, I tell you, arise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, exclaiming, A great prophet has arisen in our midst, and God has visited his people. This report about him spread through the whole of Judea and in all the surrounding region. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Meditation Young man, I tell you, arise. Luke chapter 7 verse 14 The Gospels tell the stories of three different people whom Jesus raised from the dead. Lazarus, John chapter 11 verse 1 through 44. The young daughter of Jairus, Mark chapter 5 verse 22 to 43 and the son of the widow of Nain, which we read about today, Luke chapter 7, verse 11 through 17. Luke's story differs from the other two in a significant way. For both Lazarus and Jairus' daughter, their loved ones sought Jesus' help while they were both still sick. But in the story of the widow of Nain, no one sought Jesus out. He just showed up 
and raise the young man on his own initiative. Isn't that awesome that Jesus works this way sometimes? He shows up and intervenes all on his own. When we don't expect it, he showers us with blessings that we haven't even asked for. This is yet another sign that his love and mercy are for all people, even for those who might not be aware of his presence. You might wonder then, is there even a point to turning to Jesus for what we need? Absolutely. When we bring our petitions to Jesus in prayer, we are also bringing ourselves to him. When we tell him what is weighing on our hearts, we are also opening our hearts to him. And when we bring ourselves to him and pray with open hearts, our relationship with him deepens. We receive his love and his heart becomes our heart. That heals us from the inside out. It makes us more humble and more open to receiving whatever he wants to do in us and in our loved ones. So go ahead and pray for the things you want. After all, this widow probably prayed for her son's recovery. Come to him in humility and tell him that you are ready to accept his will over yours. Come to him with trust, believing that he loves you more than you can ever know. Come to him in faith, confident that he will pour out his blessings according to his own perfect will and intentions for you. And don't be surprised if Jesus just shows up and does something you didn't even know you needed. Jesus, I trust that you have a perfect plan for my life and for those I love. Amen. We are God's hands, feet, and voice. May his peace rest upon you as you go and announce the gospel of the Lord in your words and deeds. Thank you for joining today. Abundant blessings upon you and yours. Amen. We close as always in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello, I'm Shirley, residential realtor for many years. As a professional, I welcome and encourage you to contact me whether you are buying or selling a home. Or if you know like-minded people like yourself that you want me to help guide through this overwhelming process. Whether in the Dallas Metroplex or across the country, I'd love to assist in your real estate needs. Click the link in the description below to land on my website for a plethora of real estate information. Thank you and blessings upon you and yours.